Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your, our very, <laughs> very first video podcast, The Tipped and Stiff, with your hosts, Kate Almaraz and Jared Sturridge. Very, very exciting. Very Finally. exciting. It will be our first and last recorded <laughs> podcast if the society has any sanity yeah. left. Oh, this is great. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, we finally got the right things together. We said no to the right people and we said yes to the right people. And the right now people. the right people helped. Yeah, pretty much. Tremendous amount. Yeah. Tremendous and amount. I feel like, uh, I just feel more like a pro right now. And it's kind of, it's not, I, I'm not even nervous, but like, I, it feels like I should be nervous. Right. No, but it, definitely. When I was standing, when I was like standing away from this desk, I was like, oh man, I'm going to be on camera today. I'm never yeah. on camera. No, no. There's <laughs> never a moment that I'm on camera. I like always say to people, like nobody ever takes pictures of me. I don't know. You can probably, you, I well, know their, what you're going to say. Their phone would break. I, yeah, I know you fucking cock. <laughs> I, I know that I'm just not used to it. Right. But, then, but I mean, it's like a beautiful day. It's finally fall. The air is like cool. Right. Like things are feeling like just not so weird out and the, just, the air is gross. The winds have changed. The winds have changed. changed. It literally did. It was like August 30th was the hottest day. And then September 1st was Cold. like, it was like 72. Right. It was during the day and then like 65 at night. Very but, exciting you know. though. This is a great. Yeah. And we thank everybody who's been waiting patiently and we yeah. thank everyone who's uh exactly. coming along i mean mm -hmm. we have a first episode but this is the real first this episode. is the this is the next first episode. every th all 32 other episodes were practices <laughs> for this episode in reality right we can't be held be accountable for anything that was in those because it was all practice this is absolutely true yeah anything that might seem a little off colored or yeah. you know don't maybe worry. not don't you know worry about it don't worry about it forget this about it safe friendly podcast with two absolute delusional maniacs but very exciting yeah. i mean let's get into it yeah what let's get what into happened it. to you you had something to say well you were upset you you texted me and and maddie in the group chat and you were pretty pissed about something that i think is actually pretty it, it impacts a lot of people's lives this is what happened right before it this okay. is what's so disappointing is that i was just driving and this woman in front of me you know, she's driving slow. Like, I'm pissed. Like, she's not mm. getting out of the way. And then I just see her throw, like, garbage out the window. She throws garbage out the window. I've never... I was just, like, rage. It's gross. I just turned... It's like bad. I turned into a tomato. And I was ready to just... I was ready to just take the car into the, the <laughs> other car. I was ready to just <laughs> sideswipe it. Because there's so... Follow her to her pissed. destination. Yeah. It's like, who the... Who litters? It, what a waste yeah. of time. And then I, I, I get in front of her. She does that thing where she pulls over to the side. I wasn't even like on her ass or anything. Mm -hmm. She pulled over and let me pass her. Because you, you were like riding her? You were just riding no, her? No, no, I wasn't. That's what I mean. Like I was she just did. right oh. behind her. Yeah. yeah, so she still did, which is weird. Yeah. People who do that, it's like a weird backhanded thing. Even though they're giving you mm -hmm. space. They're saying, well, if you're, if you're so impatient or right. they, they're assuming that you're like being more, you know. Right. But did you, to, so what did you, so did you pass through? Did you do anything? I wanted to, a part of me, like I wanted to just yell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it was so enraging. Right. Um, a finger doesn't do much if they're not even looking. No. A yell gets their attention and they heard it. Right. Um, and I eventually just turned off. I was going to McDonald's, which is not somewhere I Cade. like to go. Cade. It's embarrassing. I understand. But uh, I pull up one weird thing when you're trying to like eat healthier, you'll have moments where you'll be like, I want this thing. Yeah. And then the moment that you finally like start getting close to it, your brain starts going, maybe not. Right. And I was sitting in line for McDonald's and those thoughts were coming and I get all the way to the menu to order. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking over and I want, I had just such a craving for chicken nuggets. So I'm looking at the dollar <laughs> menu because you know, you can get them for like a dollar, you get four pieces for a dollar. I'm like, I'll get two of those. And I'm looking and the cheeseburgers on the dollar menu. The cheeseburgers on the dollar menu are a dollar sixty now. It's embarrassing. 
It's like these people complain about how like the minimum wage is gonna make like prices, prices go like, up. They do it. They anyway. do it fucking anyway. They do it anyway. They just they yeah. just do what they want. They're just they're just like toying with the people who need to get the dollar cheeseburger. It, it, think about that. Yeah. A dollar sixty mm-hmm. is a sixty percent increase. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's not even like respectable. It's not like 20 cents. No. I could get 20 cents. It's a 60% increase. How can McDonald's? It's not even real meat. And, and why and why raise the price? They're not. They don't have to pay more employees. They have to pay less employees. There's like nobody working There's at McDonald's anymore. I get there. I get there at fucking three in the afternoon. Nobody's there. They they, they, they raise the prices. They're closed down the majority yeah. of the time. Every 24 hour McDonald's is closed at yeah. nine. Yep. It's like, but then there's like four people in there and they're like dancing. They're, exactly. they're, they're TikTok. It's and all shit TikTok with the nurses. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, it's bad. It's uh, dumb though. I mean, it's, it's, it's weird to see. It's weird. I, I, I'm still surprised that we get so mad about shitty companies doing shitty things continuously. But when it's such a, like a small, like I wish they would just do something crazy. I wish they would just admit to something horrible instead of just like, doing these little things that are that are like that movie where the people were the food or some shit that dystopian movie where the guys like Um, getting carried away it's like yeah i can't remember soiling green yeah soiling green yeah it's the people it's like it's people yeah (laughs) it's like i'm waiting for one of those moments however that moment will not come from the fast food industry it will mostly come from like tesla or anything elon musk comes up they're fueling the cars or they're fueling like space like rockets with Right. With like stem cells or like aborted fetuses. <laughs> speaking of aborted fetuses. Speaking of aborted. Fetuses. Speaking of, of, of unprocessed meat. <laughs> <laughs> the stars are bright late at, at night, night, deep in the heart of hell. <laughs> God, fuck Texas. Oh, man. Fuck in the Texas. news this week, Texas, the Lone Star State, yeah. really, really showing off. Really showing uh, up to the plate, you know? Really, really showing up to the really plate. Really trying to hit a grand slam. I love when a state goes, you know, there's no money. There's no real future. It's all coming to an end. Let's make it a little worse. Yeah. Let's just go up. Let's, let's, lean, let's lean in. And let's out of all in. the things. Yeah. It's like, hey, I don't think putting restrictions on something that involves sex is such a good idea right now. Considering that that's like all, dude, all our, people have our genitals are we are is all we have left. That's about it, and they're about to take those away too. They're coming like, for them we're too. That close. <laughs> when, when they don't want them. No, we don't. We they don't want us to want them. No, they're gonna if they're gonna see it as like uh, something that's getting in the way of efficiency. Yeah, it's like if you want to jerk. If you're at yeah. Amazon, you, if you're in the Amazon delivery truck and you need to jerk off, they're like, we need to. That's about five like, percent income being taken away. They go. Our scanners. Across. Our scanners detected low testosterone levels. Did you? <laughs> masturbate twice last night <laughs> well, you need you stop jerking off you were you're not working hard enough oh but <laughs> well, take, uh, what's I, more selfish about texas doing this though this abortion at six yeah, weeks wait, let's explain it yeah because yeah, so, i know a lot of people probably know but a lot of people probably know about this mm-hmm. but to just iterate yeah to just make people know that what this is abortion has a uh, texas <laughs> has effectively banned abortion they they're calling it a heartbeat law Mm -hmm. and it pretty much does where the heartbeats detected about six weeks and they're banning abortions that take place after six weeks now the statistics on that 85 to 90 percent of abortions in in the united states happen after six weeks so they have effectively yeah banned abortion Mm -hmm. right and this is this includes in the cases of rape and incest right right and now here's the kicker Here's here's like the part where it gets really weird. They made it where uh, the re- way they can get away with this because you're like, where's all the lawsuits? Like, where, where's the ACLU? Right. Where's the Fed coming in? The way that they're enforcing this is that they're having like this pseudo civil involvement as well, where civil courts, regular people, can take people aiding and abetting someone who wants to get an abortion. They can sue them and they don't need any connection to them. Wow. Uh, and it's what like a fuck? minimum of 10000 or like a maximum of $10,000 that you can wow. get. And that aiding and embedding wow. includes driving someone to a Planned Parenthood. Like in another state or just to a Planned Parenthood? Just in Texas. In te- Jesus Christ. Dri- being a driver. So in theory, 
like an Uber driver would could be, be seen as aiding and abetting wow. someone looking to get an abortion after six weeks. I mean, horrendous. I mean, the really the most horrendous part about this bill is that there's going to be more Texans. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. That's the worst you're part You're not wrong. About this bill. That's genuinely the worst part. Do you think people from LA will stop moving there now that this happened? Yeah, I, yeah. But so there's pros and cons for the tech people of Texas. They're doubling down. Yeah. They saw that a bunch of liberals are coming yep. from California mm -hmm. and they're like, fuck you guys. But the worst part is that the people it's genuinely affecting <laughs> is like innocent people. It's like yeah. people who don't have money. <laughs> like, right. It's so people who need Planned Parenthood for like their health healthcare because they don't have health care. It's such a, this is, this, you know? this is a great example of virtue signaling, signaling on the right. Like we talk yeah. about virtue signaling on the left, on the lot on this podcast. And it's mainly TikTok, mm -hmm. and it's mainly just people who don't want to hear any conversation. They just right. want an argument. It's, it's all war all the time. Right. Yeah. And this is a great example of the right wing version that it's not, it's not intelligent. There's not a logic about it, right? You know, there's not, they're not looking to save anyone because if they were looking to save anyone, they wouldn't be a state that has no social programs. They, you know what I mean? Right. Texas has, did you know, this is a funny one. Genuinely. Texas has the highest rate of DUI fatalities per capita in the United States. So they're a bunch of drunks. That's all it is. It's just people flying by each other on the highway. They don't have time. They don't have time to, to drink. drink and then drive then drink and drive later. Right. They got to do it now. But it's I feel it. it's it's embarrassing that yeah. this it like uh, a, like you can't like there's this doesn't save them from this doesn't this doesn't fix their reputation if there ever was a good reputation of Texas. Right. It, it's Joe Rogan can't save this one. No, Joe Rogan can't help this no. one. No. It's Yeah, he it's died horrendous. actually. <laughs> COVID got Joe. COVID got Joe. Um it's on a serious note. Yeah. It's horrendous. It's yeah. a horrendous bill. It's a blatant attack on people's rights. Mm -hmm. It's like they're they're Attacking Roe v. Wade without going through the actual process right. and the way that they're defending it because the Supreme Court voted that this bill was constitutional, that they could do. It. And the reason why they could is because it's the same way that we can ban automatic guns, but we don't ban, you know, semi-automatic guns, right. ones that aren't automatic. So it's they're doing a clever twist on it. And the fact that there, this whole law, civil court thing is horrendous. And this is the, I forgot to bring this up. They made a website for whistleblowing to rat on people aiding and abetting people getting abortions. Really? To rat. So Jesus Texas Christ. should be the Man. rat state. It's like all they did was make fun of everybody who was, you know, telling on their neighbor for COVID, which yeah. they're rats too. I'm, that's yes. fine. But now they're rat. Now Texas yeah. is a rat. They're be like they make a whistleblower website like they're Julian Assange, like they're Edward yeah. Snowden or some shit. Like they're saving the world from terrorists. It's like extremism, <laughs> the left extremism of a you know right. But like that's, I mean, on every single thing that is happening because of this is now just an example that this like patriotic old world view of freedom that it's that there's a place in this country that's one giant bastion of freedom gone it's gone it it's doesn't gone exist. It's and, and the fact that texas was the one to do this and no other state really has done this that successfully and it's texas there's going to be some influence right well alabama will try to do it georgia will yeah. do it louisiana but the, know, i think the bigger issue now what's funny this is this seems like a news grab like a headline grab at the same time as it's like a movement inside the state because you know what's happening like two states over is like hurricanes and like right like torrential rain and right. like people losing their homes and shit like that and it's even happening along the east coast too it's right. like why do something like that right now when there's like so many because they don't like, give a shit. Well, they, they don't give they a shit. They don't care. They're not, they, they're just. And they're a dry state so it's like, <laughs> like they're just dry. <laughs> they're, it's, they don't live in a reality. It's fantasy. Yeah. It's it's all it's all. It's crazy that front. two states down is such a different. I mean, just like it's a different world. 
Right. And to think that like it was almost it was almost wrong of of the of everybody at one point to say that this one place could be a bastion of freedom. It should be everywhere, but like by by like centering your attention on the one place that you think should be, you kind of like other the other places right. and you make them feel like it's not possible there. When it it is, but I guess there just isn't like a history of it being possible other places. This gets into the conversation of what is freedom Mm -hmm. like what is actually being free and in and in this case it's a good example of can you be free when the system that you live in and rely on constantly puts up barriers for you to not experience freedom where that freedom that you value becomes privileged in a sense where the reason why this is a big deal in texas about this abortion law is the fact that yes you can go out of state to get an abortion Texas, half of Texas to go from one side to the other is a 13 hour drive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's not so like what it's to not your right only or left? paying for an abortion. Yeah. It's getting there. It's right. having transportation. It's yeah. if you have to stay there overnight, it's paying for that. Mm-hmm. It, this bill becomes bigger and bigger. You're just putting a pressure on the lower class specifically. Mm-hmm. Now you're really just taking rights away from the lower class because the people who have money who are rich in Texas will just take a private jet to California if they need an abortion. It's yeah. like, you're just, you're not helping anyone. You're just pretending and shitting on your own citizens for mind you, if they get raped and get pregnant, mm-hmm. like you're, you're putting the dirt on them. Right. Mind you, like the, and they're, they're going to walk away. The burden is on them. Li- most, they're not going to walk away. They're going to pretend to walk away like, oh, we saved, you know, we saved lives today. Mm -hmm. Whatever they need their constituents to believe, Mm -hmm. whatever their voting basis needs to believe, whether they did, they, you know, some people saw that bill and was like, we saved lives today. And it's like, in reality, you made many, many worse. In fact, they actually enforced a moral dilemma on every person who gets pregnant from a rape. Right. Right. Like that, before there was a choice to undergo that moral decision of, should I raise my rape baby? Like, should I raise it just because like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you're religious or spiritual and you believe in like, right, it happened for a reason. And maybe there is some sort of, you know, maybe there's something that will like, it'll turn with this child if I choose to do so. But in a lot of situations, like maybe it's just, that's just not feasible or maybe that's just not a possibility or someone doesn't think in that way you know it's uh, some people are like they're because like you know trauma like that will do something to you right will do so it'll it'll affect your ability to understand to to like conceptualize your life and look at it from a spiritual point of view but this but like i think people should try to i think that should be a thing that people in all forms of trauma should try to do but for the state to inf- to like force people right. to make that under very strict guidelines is completely totalitarian. Like that's kind of a good. That's right. kind of a good. It's almost like theocratic. It's kind of fucked up. Oh yeah. It's yeah, it's absolutely. not even it's not even true. Like it's not even it's not even true religion. No. It's not even it's true virtue. It's just yeah. It's just virtue signaling because that is what's fun to do. There's nothing yeah. interesting. And guess what? Who's going to say anything about it? What is fucking Joe Rogan going to really influence this one? Right. Is he really going to? It's going to be. It's going to be Neil deGrasse who... Tyson going to Sam Harris going <laughs> to talk on it? They can fucking blow me. They're soulless. <laughs> They're dickless. Those guys. I fucking they don't, hate those they, guys. It just. It's all. Yeah. And that's the thing is that even for the media, it's not like they're showing up. Right. You know, what I mean, if if this Who's if left this happened show in up? Wisconsin. Like me and you, we probably a lot of our friends would go to Madison. There definitely would be. We would go yeah. to Madison, but it's Texas. Yeah. And there's people showing up, but it's not enough because it's Texas. Like people, I, first of all, I'll, parts of my family are from Texas, horrible representation of Texas, but an accurate representation of Texas <laughs> because <laughs> it's bad look. The right look it's, is it's correct. The, cor- the bad look correct. is the correct look. Yeah. And accept it. Maybe it's just too hot. Maybe their maybe their brains are just all fried. So it's like Arizona. It's all the barbecue, dude. It like just got into they them. They just get big. Dude, yeah, Houston, you know. Houston, Dallas, 
they're big places, <laughs> big people. <laughs> it's, it shrinks. It shrinks their brain. Yeah, that's bit, another part. Know? It's like, yeah, we want the health of this person, but the moment they get out, it's out the window. It's well, as uh, much yeah. barbecue as you can eat, as much Bucky's as yeah. you can shove down your throat. Yeah, they're at, they're at, they're at fucking they're at Bucky's. They're going like, my body, my choice. They're <laughs> shoving shit down their throat, drinking until they can't see. Oh, good. <laughs> but it, you know, to switch things up here. You brought it up. It it was crazy to see all the damage done by the hurricane. Yeah, it's weird. I, I mean, did you see uh, Phil- in Philadelphia where mm. the highway was a river? Mm-hmm. Insanity. Well, in the in, in New York, the, a lot of the subways were just underwater. Underwater. They were flooded, and like people were walking. Out. Uh, you know Dan Allegretto? Mm-mm. He were he's like he's like uh, I think he's a filmmaker, a podcast. He's friends with the Red Scare Girls. But he he's, lives in New York City, mm-hmm. and he was walking home, like I think he had like a twenty minute walk, and he was knee high in water. Wow, he was knee high in water, and it was and there's like and the the water like you know in like a parking lot when you see little pools of water and there's like oil swirls in it. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that in New York City uh, in the street right. with like, right. like cigarette butts floating, wrappers, dead rats, rats. like human shit, Just probably rats. pieces of clothes, shoes, needles, needles. Everything. I mean, you never know. Probably like some deformed fish that got like right. but, but like imagine that From the three mile island explode when, yeah. the, when the meltdown happened <laughs> <laughs> there's a what's crazy about that is that there actually is um crocodiles in the yeah. sewers yeah they swam they swim in the sewers it's either ac- so alligators floods, it's, it, i can't remember i think it's alligators could you imagine could you imagine <sighs> getting out of like your your dinky studio apartment Roads flooded. You open the doors. There's a fucking, alligator. <laughs> there's like seven of them, and people are running. Yeah, just their eyes yeah. just floating down. Dude, that's floating like that's like them. a horror movie. People running with babies and shit. <laughs> when I saw the New York thing, I almost texted you like, "We need either, we need to go to New York now before right. it before gets it even worse. Goes away before it's underwater." <laughs> that seeing that really gave me like brought me back to when I would see like who people people on like sub subreddits and different you know climate change like prediction play people like perceiving the horrors of or predicting the horrors of climate change like envisioning the coast being underwater these mm-hmm. cities like slowly falling off the edge of the country <laughs> into mm-hmm. the ocean and i was looking at that and i was like wow you know it thing like, i don't know if we have the power as people to like manifest things like that right but every time i hear somebody go into some sort of diatribe on of something that they really concretely believe is like the future or it is, it is the plan. Mm-hmm. It ends up happening. You know, like, it, I don't know if it's this, if it's just accurate reporting or if they somehow like give them the idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to, I don't know. Or they gave the university idea. If you believe in all that. Right. I don't know. But it, it was just weird to see that kind of happening now in reality. Right. And now it's not, ex- it's not as extreme as, things literally falling into the ocean that takes decades it's going to take decades but but it gives us a taste and it feels like how it would feel if you were able to live and literally walk through that i don't think people understand that it could take a very bad turn very quickly right the right things could happen i saw um someone made because it's tiktok and we like to uh romanticize yeah destruction yes that's what we do it was like uh it was cutting between the flooding in New York and the fires in California because that's happening at mm-hmm. the same time. Yeah. And it was playing That Feeling by Bo Burnham in the background. Oh, that's it, funny. And there it is. And yeah. it was weird to see. And, and, and the comment, she's like, you know, uh, I don't mean this to be depressing. Remember, there is good news. Yeah, and like, do. there's some people, you know, there's people out there that aren't going to go down without a fight. And I, I was like, emphasis on some, like five in a room. Yeah. Because for the most part, when you know when you turn on the news one day and they're going to start talking about how bad the air quality is, and then the government is going to suggest mask, mask again, mm-hmm. be like, here we go again. That, here we, these commie cocksuckers oh, are coming here to break, take away our right to breathe again. It's only going to get worse <laughs> like that. Our right to breathe. Well, you can't breathe anywhere. Right. Like what you said on the last podcast, which I think we can move on, we can expand on is like, what do you think a government who's done all of the, all of the just like dystopian measures and restrictions on 
every aspect of American freedom right. over they, the last 20 years will do when you can't go outside without like safety for your life it, or in the sun. 9-11 happened. The Patriot Act was passed. The NSA well, it was, was written before 9-11. That's so you know, true. It was written right. before 9-11. It was written before 9-11. Ten years the, before, the, it, actually. The NSA gets created. Mm -hmm. An agency that is like, we're going to make a backdoor into every computer and spy on you. And our country's most logical response to that was, well, if you're doing nothing bad, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> it's if you, like it's did, like if you just people, wear your mask yeah these people would about. defend the stasi or the ss yeah. they'd be like well yeah. if you're not hiding anyone well, if you're not jewish you got nothing to worry about <laughs> if you're not hiding a jew you got nothing to the worry word, about that's what they would that's what yeah. they would do they would that's our version right, of it they would be right there yeah just like ready to kiss the boot of whoever's willing to put it on their chest the well, moment because the, these people got so scared like people like my mom, like her people in her age group, they got so scared by like, cause those are the people who still have, a lot of them still have parents who are like 80, 90 years old. So when COVID happened and all the, you know, the data was coming out that it's going to hit older people. Right. That's like, where like a deep fear set in of one, they're, they're getting older. They realize, right. Oh shit, I'm getting old. And just the mortality thing of that. And also my parents could die in like a horrific way. Right. And I, don't, hospital bed. and I don't want to fail them by letting this get out of my control as best as I can control it. Right. But that was a, that's a lot more personal of a fear than there could be terrorists on an airplane. And honestly, that fear, I don't know, it's just a lot more, it just cuts a lot deeper. And I feel like the, I feel like the fears that are being pushed into the lives of, of, those who are the most scared in our society and vulnerable is becoming more and more personal. Right. Like it becomes more and more about your physical body, mm -hmm. about your physical, like your location, your actions, not just like if you choose to fly, not just your belief about the country. Mm -hmm. It becomes about something very real. Right. At least it's not the real. Right. Well, it's not the it's, like capitalist real, not the real. It's, you know. The interesting thing about COVID that really showed is that we're not mature enough and it's not in our culture enough mm -hmm. to talk about death in a real way, yeah. in a mature way, no. right? It's, it becomes about consumerism. You know, it becomes about engagement on Facebook. You know what yeah. I mean? Like how, this made so many people, you know, people, they, 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 they're, they think they're fighting this is what it is. The people who are real anti-vax, people who are real anti-masks, right? Mm -hmm. They think they're like freedom fighters without actually doing anything. They think they're like the people who waited in line in American Idol and think like that is the way, like this is your big, this is yeah. your big, this is it. This is your break. This is your big break. This is your... Right. You're going to get chosen by the version, gods. This is their version of waiting in line to be on American Idol. Like they're mm -hmm. not they're not putting in any real work, but they showed up. You know no, what they're, I mean? They're it's, putting in work. They're dedicating many hours to watching Rachel Maddow uh ex like just explain how right. corporate America wants to fuck you in the ass. Well, on like the right, it's like they're you know, watching hours of like, you know, white ivermectin yeah. needs to be surgically injected <laughs> into the ass they need to make sure it gets because that's where the worms are that's and the, what, that's and the covid the lives in yeah. the worms yes it's no it's it's <laughs> stupid. Yeah. it's it's true though like it, it's uh we took you know remember that you know that commercial uh the the say no to drugs commercial yeah it's like this is your brain. And then it's like, and this, this is, is your brain. brain on drugs. It's like, it should be, yeah. this is your brain. This is your brain on QAnon. Like, yeah. this is what I'm sure there, there's, there's Reddit memes of that floating around. This is your brain on Tim Dillon. This is your brain. Yeah. This is your, yeah. This is your brain on Trevor Noah. Yeah. <laughs> this is your brain on, who's the fat British guy? The white James dude. Corden. James Corden. Fried, dude. That's just dude. obliterated. Yep, yeah, that's scram. <laughs> no, because it's not fried. You scramble it. You scramble it, and the you James, fucking bake it. The jeans <laughs> just whisk. This is your brain on carpool karaoke. It's just <laughs> shooting the pan of the fucking gun and then pouring it out the oh. window. <laughs> it lands on a homeless man down the street after you. It's just starting to oil fire. Yeah. They just fucking keep pouring it. 
It's going to the ceiling. <laughs> just, the house is on fire. No the fucking apartment burns down. <laughs> like 60 people die. <laughs> One dog is like wheezing outside. And <laughs> No, but that screams. <laughs> that, that, there's no effective way. It it's <laughs> it truly is. Um, oh my god, it's horrendous. There's nothing. There's this. That system is. It's clearly not like human anymore. N- like no. I'm not saying it's lizard people. I'm saying it's like there. There's no. Th- there's the shallowest capacity for intelligence analysis emotion and right. communication in that in in the the true meaning of mainstream media right and those who take it in that becomes their worldview imagine taking a imagine looking at a world the real and making it like the tiniest you can possibly get right and making it but then, but at the same time making it still seem as true or important or mm. accurate right as the nuanced huge dynamic world that could be well this is kind of like the thing where they're talking about how people's identity on facebook is becoming their second right. version of themselves facebook twitter instagram these social media websites are giving people the ability to recreate themselves in a fantasy. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. Like, this is what we're talking about. It's, it's not it. When you are a person and someone gives you the choice, Hey, you can make a vision of your own that you make up. That takes little of everything. There's not a lot of work that goes into that. You know what I mean? There's it's, it's just bullshit. Yeah, that's what it is. It's it's not real. It's all f- it's fantasy. We're not we're not we're, and we're not getting it's not getting better. Like you know, like there's people. Well, it's man, only you, getting stronger too. If, and if you look yeah. at uh, uh, you look at like news, like even local news outlets here in Kenosha, they they're all baiting it. Like w- they're tr- well, they're all, tra- and, and, they're all trying to be it. They're well, trying to be the big guys like that. We're getting the weird thing is is fighting this you become integrated into the into it right. I, I i was listening to someone you know and this pertains to us mm-hmm. and it will pertain more to us but like people who are entertainers right you just get you're in, people who are famous mm-hmm. right that's an illusion you know what i mean like they're the person they put to the front is an illusion right it's like they're doing it and it's like everyone else i want to do it too and this thing gives me the access. Right. I want to post only the pictures that are me having a good time. I only want right. to post the good pictures where I look good. I only want to post the pictures where it's like me and me and my hot girlfriend, me and my hot boyfriend. You know, we're at Six Flags. Oh, we went mm-hmm. to Florida. All There's this no shit. hot girlfriends and boyfriends at Six Flags. It's one or the other. <laughs> at Six Flags, it's either a really hot girl that you wish her boyfriend wasn't there, or it's a really hot dude who's like with some like horse. Right. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Yes or but, yes. Um, this that the, it's. You're saying you're compare. You're saying that it's kind of like following the same structure of like, of like. Well, we're of di- like blanking no, we're people. We're experiencing a dissociation. Yes. Yes. Mass. Uh, a massive scale. I, I to- a I to- massive dissociation. Dude, yeah. I to- I told you this a few weeks ago that I found like a post talking about this exact thing that they a lot of people believe. I don't even know what I mean by a lot of people. I mean, like the people that I follow on Twitter, they believe who are like into angelicism or something in, in like angel numbers, whatever, right. regardless, they have good reddits. Uh, they believe that at one point in every, 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 you know, modern digitally native person's life, because we're, we're kind of essentially digitally native. A I, lot of we're mostly di- like we understand that more than we more than most people who are three, four years older than us. Well, if you think of how much so, there is to understand in the real world and you compare it to how much there is to understand the internet. You have to focus more time into the internet almost internet, because exactly. that's becoming more of the real world. Right. So there was, you know, when we talk about like, you know, mind control, for instance, or how, how when people are traumatized, like say children who are traumatized for purposes that the elite use them for. Like, pe- like MKUltra. Like, like like, like MK Ultra, the way that they discovered, and this is actually in like the the 
documents after right. the fact of on the in the Freedom of Information the, Act. Yes, Freedom of Information you Act. You can look these. You up. can look this up. That they figured out that not the best way isn't to brainwash them. Isn't just through like psychedelics or mm-hmm. through hypnotism. It's through a pure traumatic moment. Right, where the personality split. The personality splits. Yes. The traumatic. I don't know what the traumatic moment would be for this sphere of our t- of time in in our generation where people who are digitally native are kind of split personality right but it seems that when you make a profile when you make a, an account you split yourself into multiple persons right you might think that like this representation on Instagram is you but you curate it you don't exactly. curate it the way it's not the pure form of you it's an extracted like you know it's 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 just curated there there's only cert, certain ways you can express right. yourself through them now that's the, but that's a little different than being broken and then having split personality but maybe we were broken a long time ago maybe right. we were broken through genetics maybe right. we, it was broken over the course of the last 60 70 years i imagine the 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 event the beginning of the traumatization is probably linked to the industrial revolution probably Almost yeah like in line yeah. parallel yeah. perfectly i would imagine the rise in technology that came yeah. with that as quickly as it did the this creation of these giant cities these giant right. metro metro areas right mm-hmm. right and people have had to move so much like we're we're losing the solidity mm-hmm of life we're losing the i'm here and this is the plan and i'm gonna have this family you know i mean we're losing that i'm gonna have this job that's going away jobs are are requests are requiring you to have more skills that require you to join uh to quit a job you have and go on to another one right you're losing the ability to have a solid foundation it's you're you're being we are being kept in constant chaos, right? And that's mm-hmm. what it is. Like when you think about it, it's like people have to work both in families, both people have to work. So there's not enough time for the kids. So the kid gets raised by teachers or, or daycare centers. Right. And you know, their jobs are always going to be on the brink because with capitalism, we live in this boom and bust cycle. So it's like, you're constantly in this either manic mode or depressive mode. Right. And there's always maybe something big that's going to happen. It's right? right around the corner. Like, it's always that's the interesting part. Yeah. You talk to people who are older, who maybe are more not real. They're just not maybe they're not progressive or anything. Maybe they're liberal, maybe they're conservative. But you know, there was a lot of people I knew who were older. They don't really have opinions about things, but they always like you know, there's gonna be a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, with, especially with COVID, they're like when Donald Trump's out of office and COVID's on, it's gonna get back to normal. I was like, how have you not realized? That that's the same thing people thought after Donald Trump was elected, after the war in Syria, after the 2008 financial crisis, after the uh, economic crash and the wars that came after 9-11. 9-11. It doesn't stop. It's like you have six months a year between every important event. event. You know what I mean? Like you can't can't say it's going to get better. It's like, okay. We look at the statistics. Gen X has not even recovered from the 2008 financial crisis yet. Millennials have done better than them. An entire generation that's mm-hmm. younger than Gen X has, is doing more successful after the 2008 financial crisis. It's like, I don't think what people don't understand is that there is no calm. There's not going to be a, wow, the news has been really boring lately. <laughs> it's not going to ever be that. There, and and that's, that's not the point. That's the most suspicious thing about it. Right. Is well, that why, like, out of this whole world, why are you always on 100? Why are you always screaming in our ear? Right. Well, it's, you know? the, it's to keep us, it's not good to it's, think about things. Well, it keeps us, they don't it want keeps you, you to think about it. disassociated from your own being. Right. From your own family, because then the problems that you think are the most important, like or the problems that are happening in the world, somehow you you, you project your fear onto that, of that, uh, onto your family and onto like the problems that you need to solve within your own house. Right. And and with your own friend groups. 
I think you're right in saying that the trauma started probably around the Industrial Revolution pr because that was the first split away from the natural home. That was, right. that was the first time where people probably had an inclination that we could be in space someday or that right. we could be, we could supersede nature. And that, that's kind of a break. That's kind of an ego trip. Who was, who was the author in the early 1900s? Who, who wrote who what? wrote about like he had, he wrote about tanks and he wrote about like iPads and stuff like that like he was just super I don't know creative. I know I know what you know you're what talking, talking about, about yeah. right I H G Wells yes ah, yes. yes thank you Tim. and that that when you think about that it's like there would have been no opportunity for him to really be inspired by that book unless he was seeing the Right. These giant manufacturing places being created, this bustling place of chemicals and steam mm -hmm. and coal and oil and people working in dirty overalls for 12 hours, 16 hours a day making nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like, what's the fantasy of this? What if these machines could move? What if these machines could fly? What if these machines could, you know, all could these... Think. Right. What if they? What if they could be... Right. stronger than us and at, and at a certain point they become they became our reason for for they the industrial revolution is the reason that we even have a society today absolutely but it's not a good one no like we have a, we have it's a, not we have a, a whole the kinks out yeah but like the kinks are bad the, no the, the kinks are like within our genetics at this point well, the, they're literally in our DNA at this point. The kinks and the and the the personality and right. the, well, the even, lifestyle, even like the cultures, the, the plastics, and literally, literally, yeah, they're physically in our physically bodies. in us. Yeah, they're physically yeah. in us. The the women finding plastic, microplastics, and placenta and so, things like that. So what are we so supposed like, to? I mean, the whole return to monkey, return to nature thing is kind of cringe on the surface, but it's a cope about something very real that people just don't know what to do about other than be ironic about on the internet. Right. And that's where that whole return to monkey, return to the trees comes return from, which tree. I love. I love that it's shit. It's funny. I, I, mean, I wanted to, we were going to move to Montana at one point and, and you know, yeah, return. Just it's, it. it's just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's another fantasy within the fantasy that like it's the fantasy to escape from this hellish fantasy. But in reality, that would be, you know, right. you, like Texas. you can't unring the bell of, I know that technology exists. I know we have the potential for mass communication and insane media right. like Texas, like Texas, like but to escape from Texas. And then, the, you know, it's what's interesting about it yeah. is that it's gotten so s silly yeah. and that's what it is. It's laughable because what people don't understand if they, when they listen to this podcast, right? People think we'll, we'll talk about something sad and serious. I'm like, in reality, we're just talking about it because it's something to talk about. But what they need to do is just accept that the party's over. And the sooner mm -hmm. you accept the party's over, it becomes a lot more funny. Right. Everything. It's like when you're like, I can't believe they did. It's like, really? I can. And, because and we're, we're the, we're a few things on the Titanic. There were the violinists. There was the there was the little orchestra playing. Were them? They were they were they were not keeping anybody calm, but they played, and people were like it, it was just like music within the chaos. Right. It was like just a, it was like just a a dichotomy. It was just cool. Like it's just it's what they were meant to do. It's what mm -hmm. they were there to do. So they still did it. But they but the ship was sinking, and the, all the while people were screaming. But we're sitting here just like talking and laughing and shit. It's kind of like that. Right. We, we also, given the opportunity, could be the guys helping people on the boats. I'm no, I'm but, definitely, but but, I'm, but I'm definitely you're, drunk. Here, I'm in the a guy. Cabin. Yeah, I'm definitely drunk in the cabin. The maybe maybe <laughs> no, yeah no, you're the guy who comes out and like. <laughs> you're the guy who comes out after they tell you that they have we have no more lifeboats and you start like picking people to like push off or shoot <laughs> <laughs> or no you just start handing people bottles you're like hey sorry you don't have enough coin to get on this boat right <laughs> like you don't have a nice enough suit to be on this boat your I'm, wife isn't hot enough to be I'm on in this a, i'm in a cabin and like the water is coming in and i'm just like i'm just like let's swim it's over let's it's, swim let's just swim it. it's just like let's swim. dance in shit like let's just yeah. embrace it it's over like i would you just like the you go to the band or the band playing and you just start yeah. singing as loud as you can. You just sing mm -hmm. and you dance 
And you just the the boat is tipping and it breaks yeah. in half. And, and you jump off and you cannonball into it. You, you cannonball. Let it, you own it. There's you fucking no, own it. Because this no is needle not, dive. You no, cannonball that. There's no flame. There's no <laughs> screaming. There's no tears. Because you know what this is? It's not nihilism. This it's, is not nihilism. This is the acceptance and the realization it's that maturity. It's maturity. It's maturity. Grow it's, up. <laughs> it's when you realize that it, that your happiness and that your contentment and the universe isn't out there. The world isn't something out there. It's something that's in here. And if it dies out there, then y you have to just hold whatever you have inside. Right. Like there's, you're, not, you're not meant to put it out there. You just hold it inside and you own it. Right. And you die with it. It's and it a, dies with you. It's the culmination of just like, you know, everybody, when you were, or you were a kid growing up, every teacher is like, you can do anything. And you grow up and you're like, you got a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> your He's kid, like, damn right I did. That motherfucker, an alcoholic. The motherfucker had a small dick. He was a drunk. <laughs> it's like, you have nothing. His dad was an asshole. His mom was a fucking... Right. It's, not, it's, not, it's not like... Um, there's no getting these none of this was real like all the support right. like you're gonna get all these things are gonna happen it's like it never did it never will and the millennials they grabbed them they wish for it so much they're like I'm, yeah. gonna get, I'm gonna get into the big school i'm gonna get into theater i'm gonna be on broadway i'm gonna be in hollywood mm -hmm. they became baristas like that's and they watch the disney plus at home and they watch disney plus at home and they get married and they don't fuck. They don't. They don't like fuck <laughs> because of COVID. They because can't. their wife. Because they are both dying of COVID. <laughs> they can't. They don't do anything. And they get mad on on Reddit. Like that's what they do. Yeah. And and Gen Z is like, wait a minute. What if we just skipped all the boring parts? Yeah. What if we skipped the whole not fucking part? Right. And we skip right to the fucking all the time part. And just ignoring <laughs> and all the things. <laughs> But not not into like an excess, not into like a Dionysian state. It's more of like a accepting that we can make Rome, the fall of Rome, fun. That realizing that hey, right. there's there's a historical precedent here. You know, we are the generation that will <laughs> Even, put this baby to rest. You just like there's people. You're at like a town hall meeting for like mass. You just run into like you should be proud that you're part of history yeah, right now. Yeah. You're experiencing history right now. Everybody's so self conscious and so, so everybody sees. Everybody's like the narrator of every right. life. They all have like that internal monologue that usually like only autists or ADHD people would have. Like yes. over th like like us seeing your life as like Both a story. Both of us like th seeing every choice as like a oh this is like a plot twist in my life. It's sickening to to have, right. but it's also kind of funny when it happens to a bunch of people. But we're doing like how do you how are you supposed to engage? Like we couldn't be drafted into war with that kind of mass psychosis, dude. They we couldn't be could soldiers on the front line. There was line. a draft for Gen Z. Oh my god! Every day, would be... dude, they would just be like, it, "Remember that scene from a uh, Full Metal Jacket?" Mm -hmm. And the guy's Which like, one? "What the fuck? What the fuck is this?" And he picks up the donut. It would just be like ketamine. Yeah. It would just be constantly. It'd be like a puff bar. <laughs> Or just like some anime thing. It'd be like, just like, like disgusting. Book. Like it, imagine it, a draft like bunkers with like or like uh everything would be with, so like, sticky posters all oh, the God. time. It'd be horrendous. And people couldn't stop jacking off. They would just be like it would be like everyone would have like they would have to make rules for like colored hair. They would have to make rules for like <laughs> if you could paint your nails or not in the military. Like they would be like <laughs> they're like this is the like the 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 drill officers would look at each other like this is the bottom. Dude, no, we there would be a, at the bottom. You think there's a lot of fucking in the military now, or there's a lot of like, you know, people fuck. Right. It would be even crazier now with Gen Z, like, cause the maybe the the amount of people who would be like, uh, like in the LGBTQ community or non-binary, no, it, it, you know, it would it, be, yeah. it would be like a, it would be like a, just a, a a room full of people in in the spectrum. Like people who they like would fuck anybody and, will fuck. and love everybody. They're you know? like, and they're, they're going to be depressed because they get drafted to the military they're in they're fighting Syria or Iran or something. Dude, it's like the moment the lights turn off in the bracks, it becomes oh. like a drag. It becomes like a drag runway. Yeah. It's like, there's people it's doing like burlesque. comedy. Yeah. It's just like, I want to go. The I want to be drafted. Can we, can we go? Can we get a fucking new war? <laughs> Afghanistan has been done for two weeks. I'm already fucking bored. It's uh, America. Already <laughs> dude, we are so ready to do it again. Oh yeah. It's like, it's, oh, if someone was showing a list of all like every week or year that like Americans died in the Middle East and it's like it gets to a part where it's like zero in a row like months wise uh -huh. and then it gets to the 13 that blew up in at the Kabul airport. Now look it's sad 
It's not. Yeah, it's not. Good. It's not good. Rest but this is the same logic of like when people on the right wing start talking about how like the FDA isn't going to approve the vaccine. And it's like when the fuck did you start caring about the FDA? Like when did you start paying attention to like government documents? It's like it's the same way of like. Uh, all these people, they they post all these things of a horrendous. Like this. when did you start caring about these dead soldiers? When did when you did, start? When did you start with all this? Yeah, shit? There's people yeah. in their sixties talking yeah. about this. I'm like, dude, you were you saw what happened after 9/11. It like nothing like, and you're still here. Like we got to go back. Like these people haven't learned their lesson yet. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's so backwards and boring. It's yeah. like it's it's I, not even going to be interesting in the books. We can't. It's and then when that something like that happens, it's like we cannot have like SJWs and evangelical Christians at the same time. It cannot be the nineties <laughs> and the 2020s at the same time. It, we cannot be, yeah. do, we cannot have this thing where we have like the peace doves and the war hawks again. We, we that's going to be country so will fucking be over. boring. Dude, if it gets to the thing where like the three headlines of the four headlines every week are uh, hurricanes and fires, you know, the 10th variant, mm-hmm. right? you know uh, uh some war and then like pull a like unrest like civil unrest right. like that it's getting to the thing where well things escalate i mean it's it's there's no way to keep it just that because things are going to escalate in some way somebody's going to shoot up a mosque again so it's some crazy someone's shit's going to do that again, someone's going to commit a horrible you know hate crime someone's yeah, going to or many people right and and we we're, we're, i just want to know w- when I wonder what the news is going to show when everyone gets used to violence, like really gets used are to it. Are we not? Are we not? We already are used to it, but like they're still doing it enough. Like the comment button on the Facebook post is still there. You know, <laughs> you can still see a post yeah. about like ivermectin and have like a thousand comments on it. And it's just thread after thread <laughs> of people ripping each other yeah. apart. Dude, like I love, I, I like reading them. I don't like participating in them. And it's fun to like count how many comments it takes until like someone threatens a member of their family. Yeah. Because these people are so like, these people talk about how dangerous the internet is, how crazy. Oh my God. T- this city is so nuts now. Mm-hmm. They talk about how crazy everything is. But then they argue with random strangers and tell them to like kill themselves online. Right. And then you click on their profile and they have like who they're married to. Yeah. What you know, college they, they work, went to. What, car, they, what college they went to. Their phone number, their email. They might as yeah. well just post their damn social security card number. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's that. Just dox them now. It, they just, they, dox them. they literally dox themselves and they're yeah. arguing about politics on Facebook. And... I, I, I'm waiting for the day that Facebook, like Zuckerberg, that robot has to come out on stage and in front of that committee and talk about how like uh, the shooting that took place because of a Facebook argument that went too wrong. They're like, what are you going to do to stop election fraud? What are you going to do to stop people from committing acts of violence against each other? And he's just going to be like, he's going to speak perfect Mandarin. He's not even going to... The reporter, not, the, the reporter not, is also speaking Mandarin. And, it's not even... It's just like they have like the spinning like CCCP in like yeah. the corner. It's not even... It's not even talked about. He does it like... It, it, it's like Lindsey Graham on the committee. And he's like, thank you for your time, yeah. Mark. Like, thank you for coming out. Lindsey Graham's going to save it all. Oh, or Jeb. God. Or Jeb. Imagine Jeb. I think... I mean, people are ready to go. People are ready for... I mean, like that hate that quick hatred on and quick violence on social media is really just like people have been like broken in such a weird way and like just just given so much ego and so much and they they their their feelings have been justified to a fault right where like they think that if they are extremely upset about something that that has to become their mission. People, right. I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole like a war drive that people that our country has, that our culture and can has. Can we be mad? You know, no. Some of, I mean, some of this sometimes it's, is all some people have. Yeah, this is all they have. Left. Honestly, I'm close. I mean, I just, <laughs> I, I, the some things keep me grounded because the internet's kind of full of people who are like fairies and shit, and they're literally like, they think they're mystical creatures, right? And that's that's fun. I, I like those those people are. <laughs> Those people are, they're one just as insane as QAnon people, but, right. but they're at least, you know, they read like 
cool literature right that was written by cool people in the like hundreds of years ago Mm -hmm. but it's you know it it's all different expressions of you know how people have been broken i think that's just more evidence that there's deep-seated issues in our society that people we're not looking at the real because the real would be that trauma it'd be why are we here right we're looking at the we're we're just we're just looking at the at the show we're looking Mm -hmm. at the at the playtime right we're having some fun I think uh, we're going to go down. I'm glad to see it. I'm kind of glad to see it all kind of fall apart. I mean, aren't you? Isn't this not what we're... Aren't you, aren't you kind of glad like to see... It gives me like a half chub. A half chub. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I keep hitting my mic. <laughs> hey, you do. All right. Well... We're going to get out of here, I think. I went up. Thank you guys for tuning. Sorry. Microaggression. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank disgusting. you all. I like to keep it open anyway. Open, open everything. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our first video podcast. We yep. hope to see you next week. Many more to come. Many, many. Should more we talk? To come. We're gonna have. Uh, we're gonna have Lund on next yes. week. Next week, we're gonna have uh, the band Lund, a few members from there. So that'll be video as well. So you get two next week. Fucking selfish bastards! We're breaking our backs over here. <laughs> Thank you to uh, everyone, and uh, have a good day. Goodbye. Bye.